Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of Dim Lighting, we're answering your questions that could be and are about anything. And I'm just, man, I hope. You're mad. I hope this show goes well. You just, you've been mad It's not gonna be in. because of me. I mean, I freaking, I'm, I didn't eat lunch, I'm freaking starving. You're hangry. I'm, I got a bar here. I don't wanna eat it on this show because that's not professional. And I'm walking in, I get the bar, I go outside, I come back in, and the freaking door that hits me in the heel. Yeah. And not just like a little. Yeah, I made some adjustments to it. <laughs> you loosened some, it. I made some adjustments to the it, door. It, I, the the it was door a trap. always closes slowly. Yeah, and then until the freaking, now. I, I open the door, I walk in, and it's, and it's, it, 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 it it sh it shoves me in yeah. by hitting me on the heel by design. I want people to get in and get out quickly. Hurt, man. Feel hey, listen. Feel free to eat your kind bar. Not a sponsor, but a good bar. I mean, could be a sponsor. I mean, we, it, it would be if they wanted it to be. So now you can talk about my chewing. Here oh it is. Gosh, we don't. You don't turn away. Be a, do do us all a on day and turn away from the mic when you chew. Okay, pull away from the mic because. Now, but hold on, but we've been talking about I know. this. I'm we, working on my chewing volume. Link and I had a, Link and I actually had a, what I would call like a Jedi chewing training session. Do a little last ASMR. Week. That's uh, my packaging. And I didn't want to be offensive because I realized that it's a slight, it's a touchy subject when you're, when you're, when you're trying to comment on something that's so personal with someone, which the sounds that their mouth make is about as personal as it gets for a person. So, but as Link and I were sitting there eating lunch in our office across from each other, as we often do, I just said, you know, what if you, have you thought about maybe trying to chew not so hard? Now, here's a normal chew. Good gracious, that's just unadulterated? That's me, that's not that, a horse. That's actually less intense than you typically do. When you're doing thoughtless chewing, like when I, like when I look at you and I can tell that you're just, your eyes are off in nowhere and you're just, <laughs> Just chewing. I'm wonky eyed chewing. It's harder than that. I think you All should right. set a, 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 a louder bass. Well, I am angry, so I'm gonna channel it. Look off into the distance like you're not thinking about anything. Oh gosh, that's it. I mean, the um, the, the separation, the, the the distance that your that your mouth separates and comes back together without opening, that alone is amazing to me. Thank you. Uh, but then there's also a pop, which I believe is a TMJ thing, maybe. I don't know, but it yeah, there's definitely a pop. Like almost on every chew. Do it again? I was trying to it just only move works my jaw. <laughs> it only works when you've got material in there. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta give the wood chipper the wood before the wood chipper becomes a wood chipper, otherwise it's just a chipper. Good, oh my. <laughs> it's so, people, you know what? We do not blame you if you've already left. I'm sorry. Course, we're not talking to you because you're still here. But here's one more chew. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to eat like a snake and just swallow it. Mm -mm. You trying to go to the other end of, this, end of the spectrum? First of all, these things are chewy, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, you're not complaining, right? They might be a sponsor one day. Don't complain too much about it if you if you do want to. I'm chewing slowly. It's still noisy. I can't do it. Well, you're but no, yeah. You're right up on a mic, which is an, an unfair way to test your chewing. You need to do it in a room as a normal yeah, person. You, you eat this last piece. Normal, up on the mic. It sounds like a, if I go into like my Apple library to like use a sound effect for chewing, I'd be like, that's some gentle chewing. I'm the one who did the Apple sound, but that was before we were working together. I was we four. always work I together. I was four years old. Jerk. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, man. Well, and I don't want to. No, but I've, as I've told you before, I'm worried that you're gonna wear out your molars like an old elephant and you're gonna die one day. You know, they've got seven sets of molars and once they get on that last one, you have to just let it die or feed it pudding. I love pudding. <laughs> it, I love, well, I love chocolate pudding. I love vanilla pudding. I love chocolate and vanilla pudding swirl. There has been a uh, peanut butter pudding with chocolate. I've I've seen that and I like it. 
Are I you? Don't, I don't like a lot of other the puddings, but I do like. <laughs> I don't know. That didn't come out right, but uh, chia pudding. I do like that. I had some of that today, actually. You know, I went to my my son's not graduation, but promotion. They call it because when you when you leave eighth grade, he's going to high school, you, man. You go to the next thing. You just get promoted to it. Now I was dropping Lincoln off. I had chia pudding after that. They did they have like a reception with chia pudding? Yeah, that's the thing now. No, we went to a restaurant after to celebrate, and my wife ordered chia pudding at a restaurant. Well, it was after she had already eaten breakfast. Okay, it was still like a, hungry. A chia pudding brunch type situation. Mm -hmm. I was dropping Lincoln off uh, late because I, I guess they would they had the eighth grade promotion, and yeah. then the seventh graders were dropped off for for two hours on the last day of school to just. Sign their sign yearbooks, and I noticed. Yep, I was seeing eighth graders and their parents leaving. I was yep. like, "Well, that'll be me next year." And I was like, "Huh, that's that's Rhett and Jesse and Locke." Now I didn't see you, but I noticed that a lot of people were dressed up. Um, and I was like, "I'm going to take a mental note that when this happens to me next year, you're not going to dress up. I ain't going to dress up. I don't think you have to make a mental note. Did you dress up?" You you know what I had on before I put on this shirt? Yeah, that's what I wore. If you call that dressing up? No, I mean people look like they were putting on like Sunday I, best. I have situation. on. I got on brown shoes though. I mean that's no. It, you, you looked like you were just coming into the office, but there were people who looked like they were going to a church service. Locke uh, did wear a tie. Oh, he did. But he wore his shirt untucked. Oh, okay. You know, it was like cool. For did him, he walk for him. across the stage and get handed uh, uh, a promotion? Yeah, 700 students or something crazy like that. Oh no. And uh, so they had an incredible system that they had practiced for hours to get right. You got people on each side calling names in alphabetical order. The kids know exactly when they're supposed to stand up like the different rows. They go out and they come back in. It was as quick as you can move through 700 students without just basically saying, should we just not do this at all? Right, it you was know? clear that no one cared but they just cared enough to know out of obligation they had to do it. And there were some people who were so enthusiastic, even though you're supposed to hold all applause oh, to the gosh. end. There were some people who went really crazy for their kid. And it's just the thing, I, I turned to Jesse and I was like, it's not 1920. Getting through eighth grade is not a big deal anymore. And also, it's illegal not to. So it's not like it's really an accomplishment. I'm sorry if that sounds insensitive. Is that what you stood up and yelled when yeah, Lot got his? exactly. This isn't that big of a deal. It would be illegal if we did otherwise. <laughs> uh, what, watch out now, that almost cheered me up. Also, now this is really gonna cheer you up. You will never believe who did the commencement speech at the eighth grade promotion. Well, do you wanna do the yes or no game? Queen Latifah. Oh, come on, man. I wanted to freaking do the yes or no game. Is it a musician? Yes. Is it a rapper? Yes. Is it a female? Yes. Is it Queen Latifah? I could have got it in three questions. Are you not amazed by that? Well, I'm, I'm disappointed that I didn't get to arrive at it. Because I'm, I'm lying. Of oh. course Queen Latifah didn't do it. It was the principal. Hold on. They didn't even bring in a famous Hold person. Hold on, Queen Latifah didn't do it? No, the owner of Mini Fat Burgers did not do the commencement speech at my son's promotion because well, that, again, it's not a big deal. Queen is Latifah she an is not owner gonna, of many <laughs> fat burgers. Yeah, Queen Latifah is not going. You to were screwing with me. Stop managing fat burgers. That's not what she actively owning. Does. She's an actor. She's a she. She's a musician. She does all kinds of things. She's the queen. Next to Beyonce. Now, all I will say though is that she's not going to divert her schedule to come do something that is of no consequence. It's funny that I was so intent on playing the yes or no game. That you just that washed over <laughs> Queen Latifah. No, your lies, man, your dirty hip hop lies. You think Queen Latifah would do that kind of thing? Queen Latifah would do a college graduation. If her, if her daughter. For a pretty penny. Or son went to the school, yeah. I think Queen Latifah is like a, she does speeches for hire. That's what you needed today, with what you've been through. What have you been through, by the way? Why are you in a bad mood? I don't wanna, well, if you must know, I, I mean, I told you I didn't eat. 
Yeah, because we got it. We're, 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 That's it. I just didn't eat. It's I, that freaking simple. I have to leave at a certain time because I'm going to my follow up appointment for my eye issue, which I told you guys about. Which everything is fine with the eye, but they were just like months down the road. We want to, you know, we got to do the dilation, and we want to, you know, we want to check and make sure everything's okay. So I have to go to that and I have to be there on time. But you are intentionally not eating. It, I, you haven't talked to me about this, but you, you're doing, I heard you tell someone else because you didn't want to tell me that you're doing intermittent fasting. I don't know what that is except that you're not eating. Well, use the context to figure out what it is. Don't, don't talk <laughs> down to me. I know, I know what intermittent fasting is. I'm fasting intermittently. It's when you, you're skipping dinner for, for, uh, for health reasons, I think. Well, okay. Uh, and first of all, I'm not doing it in any disciplined manner because A, I eagerly accepted the kind bar piece that you gave to me without any protest. And also. Well, you're doing it intermittently. My parents are in town and I'm making scallops for them tonight. What? I'm making scallops for them tonight. Scallops? Scallops. 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 I'm but, making scallops for him tonight. So, g give me, and I'm you. You can bet your scallop I'm going to eat some. But give me this, this spiel publicly that you didn't want to give to me privately because you knew I would just give you the stink eye the whole time. Just because you don't care about these kinds of things. That's, oh no, no, that's, no. that's fine. But uh, but I I'm choosing to care about it now. Okay. Because my question is, if you're going home intermittently and not eating dinner for for health reasons, which I'm I'm semi-curious about. Semi-curious. I'm major curious about. I think about, you're curious for entertainment purposes no, only. No, That's my guess. No! <laughs> okay, you're the reason I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> no, it's the door um, hitting me in the foot. But I'm, I'm, I'm macho curious about, mucho curious. Mucho, yeah, macho curious, that's not something About you how be. you're not angry at night if you don't eat. So well, you, you can get to that. Like that's the thing I'm interested in. Okay. Well, but I, but, but we do need to know. The, well, the very the very quick uh, thing is um, I'm experimenting with intermittent fasting because there's a plethora, a cornucopia, if you will. No, I don't. Of don't, research. Don't act like I'm not going to believe you. I oh. I certainly believe you. That suggests that uh, not only is it a good way. I'm not really interested. It, I, I always I have the little bit of the of the of the spare tire. I've had it basically my entire adult life, and I'm ju as I cross the the threshold of forty, I just ask myself, do you think in your forties you could get rid of this? And so it's sort of a personal challenge to myself. You were asking it. Yeah, I talk to it. I, I massage it. And I, what is I it? I grab it. It doesn't speak. I can, however. I mean, I could get mold this thing into the shape of a mouth. That's how much I got right there. Okay. And uh, it is the last fat that you lose for complex scientific reasons that I won't go into. But before you, you die, you is it, if you're trying to lose weight, typically your belly fat is the last fat you'll lose because of the the composition of that particular fat. However, intermittent fasting is not. I'm not that interested in weight loss. What I am interested in is longevity. And uh, intermittent fasting has been shown not only to be great for weight loss, but also great for uh, longevity. And basically, I don't understand all the science behind it. I just know that the evidence suggests that if you, if there's like a 16 hour, 14 to 16 hour period per day that you're not eating anything at all, uh, you can you, you're helping your body in a lot of different ways, avoiding. Uh, disease, reducing cancer risk, increasing longevity in, in general. I don't like knowing that I gotta stop what I'm doing and eating it three times a day because I've trained my body to do it. So I, I, I'm, I'm actually open to this because I don't like in principle being a slave to well, having to eat yes, food. Because I, what, what I will say additionally is that the principle of fasting has been a part of different faith traditions for a long time because it is a way of denying yourself of this very basic need and you kind of overcome it with willpower. And after, you know, I, I, I've done like a seven day fast, not any, like in college I did a seven day fast. Yeah. Um, and you do get to some interesting places uh, mentally a few days in, I haven't done that. But what I will say is that yes, I get home and I try to do this Monday through Thursday. And again, I'm not disciplined. If there's a party, if there's a get together, if people are going out, if, if my a, parents are in town. If there's a scallop involved. If my best friend hands me the butt end of a kind bar, I will break the fast 
It's not uh, a, a super disciplined thing. It's just a general principle. However, what I have found is that I do think that there is something to saying I'm going to overcome this desire to eat. I'm not gonna let it make me upset because I do think you become a bit of a slave to your body and its needs and if yeah. you can kind of beat the body back, so, uh, so that's you can I'm, overcome it. So, so do you like me have a tendency to get really hangry? I don't think I'm as, I have a tendency towards hangriness to the degree that Headaches? You know. Uh, yeah, I, I have gotten a few headaches at night, yeah, and I'll just pop a couple of ibuprofen, hopefully. I, I, I that's, try to that's put- That's breaking your fast, you're I, eating pills, I man. push that off as much as possible because I do think I'll adjust, but if it gets bad, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to enjoy my nighttime activities. Then I will have some ibuprofen. Did okay. You, did you like that pause that I that I did there after pa nighttime activity? Pa I don't like pauses in podcasts in general because I'm like driving down the road to listen to a podcast. All of a sudden, you think it's buffering. It got it got quiet for a second, and with the filters that not only us but most people put on podcasts, like it'll go like it's like when you turn off the lights in a room and it's a magically pitch black room. Mm. Auditorially speaking, that's very shocking to me, and I don't like it. That's why I, I, I like try to heavy breathe. Okay, good. That was really just for the people watching, not the people listening, because I also made eye contact with my camera. That's my camera. I, don't, I, know, I, don't, I know. I don't look at it that often. Anyway, I'll report back later. Um, I, uh, I I just, but I don't know much about it. I've just heard about it on a lot of podcasts. I've seen it in a bunch of articles. You see it in the news all the time. All the people who seem to know what they're talking about when it comes to the body and life and health are, are singing the praises of intermittent fasting. Do you sit down with your family and they're eating and you're just sitting there like a bump on a log? Uh, chewing on ibuprofen? I have done that. I have sat down with them and had tea while they were eating because you're not breaking your fast if you're having tea. Uh, How convenient. Also, the... Um, uh, my family is so not scheduled that everybody has something in, in the evening. So uh, there was only like one or two nights a week that we all sit down together anyway. Uh, so it hasn't impacted that a whole lot. Like we, I get breakfast with the boys, you know, and, and we we see each other in the morning. Have you had any positive results from your intermittent fasting to date? I had a vision. <laughs> okay. No, I didn't. Uh, of Queen Latifah? I only made it, I've been doing it for like a month and there's only been one Monday through Thursday stretch that I was consistent for all four days. Um, so I felt good about myself in that time. But the funny thing I, I realized is that if I was doing this 10 years ago, like I'm working out almost every day, mm -hmm. I'm doing like 45 minutes of cardio, I'm doing some reasonable weight training. You'd be lean and mean, huh? It, this would be so gone, but something about getting to this age. I know you guys, we talk about how old we are a lot, but it's amazing. I, I have that. How I have, unresponsive I can the, make, the spare tire is. I can make a, it is what not you say, responsive. A, a mouth. I could do that, I, I have that too. That could be a separate YouTube channel. Just our belly mouths talking <laughs> to each other. In 2006, that would've worked. Okay, I, 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 feel, I feel okay now, I feel like, we can get closer to the to the stated objective, which is answering any question that you have given to us, which is gonna lead to some other stuff. But first, I wanna let you know where you can get this shirt that I'm wearing. Yes, we have created the Daniel and Richard shirt. Is it? Is it you on your own chest? No, it's Daniel and Richard. No relation to me. That's a cool freaking shirt, man. The only thing that makes it not cool is the fact that it looks like you're wearing a drawing of yourself, but you are playing a character on your own shirt. I just think it would, I, I should have worn it. I don't think you should go out in public like that. But I think everybody else should support entertainment. And that is a freaking awesome shirt. I like to have fun. It says Daniel and Richard in cursive down there. Get one at mythical.store. Support your local entertainers. Or us if we're not uh, local to you. We also have these new, I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk about it. I noticed that, I haven't seen that these yet. These new mythical uh, bands. I th there was a bunch of them out there. You put you slap one on? I just walked across the room and Feldman just put one on my arm. Uh, so I assume we're selling those. 
I don't know, go to mythical.store and see. <laughs> well, I think we will be at some point if we're not. Okay, let's get into some questions. Before we do, I, I'm, I, I think at the end of this podcast, we're gonna talk about something that if you're a committed listener to Ear Biscuits, you're gonna wanna stay to the end, and if you get bored, skip to the end. Maybe it might be an eight minute conversation. Eight minutes, okay, might, I got a plan for that because I gotta leave at a certain time. Because we're gonna talk about the nature of this show and what what has happened and potentially is happening with it. And I think I just oversold something. Um, but we are going to, we're gonna talk about that uh, at the end of this episode. Just we're, some introspection about the show itself because I have some thoughts about it. And Jacob just informed me that these amazing new uh, wristbands are not being sold until, until early July. Or at VidCon. Or at VidCon. <laughs> so if you're going to VidCon, they will be available there. That's probably why there's so many in the office right now because we're taking them down there physically. Like this first question is for you. Oh. So I'll ask it. Um, yes, I'm angry. Tatiana Koklava, does Link have a special ritual with Jade like the one Rhett has with Barbara during his morning stretches? Well, first of all, any question that starts with, does Link have a special ritual? Yeah. It, dot, 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 yes. Yes, of course. With my, my b beloved dog, Tucker, from my, my adolescence, I, I talk about the ritual of patting him on the head. I can't, actually I can't remember, was it five or seven times? Five. Because we, I wrote about it in, in the book. It's five and then times. once I put it in the book of mythicality, I just, I forgot it because I know I can reference it there. It's also a number, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't make a habit of remembering those. I don't have anything that ritualistic. I mean, Jade sleeps in the bed with us and then when, I'm very ritualistic when it comes to taking her outside to use the bathroom because as is true with um, Dachshunds or Dotsons or however you wanna say it. Apparently you don't say Dotson because yeah. I said that in we say Dotsons, a but recent episode of GMM and people are like, what, what is up with the way that Dachshund. Rhett says Dotson? Dachshund. I say it the way we say it in America, okay? Um, it runs in their lineage to be hard to housebreak so I'm very ritualistic about when she goes out, right before we go to bed, right when we get up in the morning. So you get up and first thing, like you, get, what's the first thing you do when you get out of bed? Do you, you relieve yourself first, right? I relieve myself. And then you relieve As your long dog. as she stays in the bed, she's safe. She actually will not jump out of the bed on her own. That's she's convenient. such a diva. And it works, yeah, she won't go up the stairs on her own and she won't jump in or out of the bed on her own because we try to preserve her back health, which means we, we carry around like a queen. Ironically, which is what I do every morning. Yeah. Preserve my back health. Huh. huh. Me and Jade should talk more. She said she would like to talk to you more. I let her lick me in the face more than you do. <clears throat> um, but besides that, the main ritual we have is whenever I lay down on the couch, I always call her up and she lays on my chest and then we take a nap together. That's like the most special Thing we do. Of course, we sleep together every night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she sleeps in between me and Christy, and like will burrow herself down in the bottom. They like to; these dogs like to burrow in 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 no, duvets. No suffocation concern. We were really scared. Like when we first got her, like little, little puppy, she would crawl. She would get under the covers and crawl down all the way down to our feet. And I was so nervous that she was going to suffocate, but. Then we got she, used to it. She hasn't yet. She, no, she, she comes out. When she gets hot, she comes out and she goes wherever she wants and she wakes us up, not by barking, but by flapping her ears. That's how she wakes us up. That's so gentle. She, she's a woman of ritual herself. I have a, I, I, there's an update to my barber ritual, which I think I, last time I told you that it's become so ritualistic and again, this is something that Barbara initiated. I, the first thing I do when I get out of bed, well, I relieve myself and then I come back into uh, the bedroom and I lay down next to the bed on the rug and I begin to do my stretches and as soon as I come back in, if I have a towel in my hand, because I use a towel for the special stretch, Barbara jumps down. You like bite down on the towel? Eh, it's too difficult to explain. The, uh, uh, as soon as I come back in, she gets, she jumps off the bed, she's not concerned about her own back health, and then she c gets on top of me, and 
lays with one foot on each side of me and her head right on my head. Licks, she licks me, it's gotten down, she just licks me one time. She's just like, oh, and then she immediately used to go back and get in the bed with Jesse. Uh -huh. She's like, I gotta go down and get on his chest and lick him and then go. <laughs> but now, in the past couple of weeks, she's changed her routine. She gets on top of me, she gives me the one lick, and then she gets off of me and goes to my hand. To your hand. She goes to my hand and she puts, and she starts scratching at my hand because now she just wants me to pet her. Oh, uh-uh. And then she scratches my you hand. You can't do that while you're stretching. And then after she scratches my hand a couple of times, she takes her face and she puts both of her hands on her face. She's showing me, she I mimics. want you to do this to me. <laughs> really? Yes, and so I do it. She, you, she, she wins, huh? So she you're no longer me. stretching. No, I because I'm doing this thing where I'm rotating my uh, my lower body. So your hand I, is and free. And my hand is free, and so I pet her a little bit. But do you pet her on the head where she's petting herself? I think that she's got a limited range of motion with her paw. She's like, you infer, I don't think she can do this. Infer a good configuration of petting from my like very limited paw shenanigans, right? Charades, my paw charades. Yeah, and it's, she she's done that for a long time. She's show she's shown you how she wants to be pet. It, is it petted? It's cute or pet? I don't know. And um, she, uh, but now she's she's worked it into a routine. So I can, she's, it's she's the one with the ritual. It's irresistible. She's ritualizing you. She's definitely, she's in charge. Let, she's in charge of the whole house. Let's hear another question. Uh, this is from Tracy, Dr. T. Made up games you played as kids. My brother and I shared a room until we were 10 years old. We had twin beds and pretended they were our boats. The game was called Guys and Gals. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Wow. Guys and gals. We were obviously super bored. Not sailors in boats you know, or yeah, fishermen. You, you got a guy boat and a gal boat, I guess. Guys and gals. Uh, well, we, you know, speaking of the book of mythicality, we, we talked pretty extensively about the game that, that the two of us would play uh, where we took the, the Nerf basketball and we would sit down across from each other with our legs spread and roll <laughs> it into each other's nuts. <laughs> Which I don't, we, there was, the running joke in that chapter of the Book of Mythicality was what we were going to call that game. Right, and, but. Uh, in, Nut in the, apocalypse or something? I don't know what we ended up calling it in the book, but. Well, in the book we got a testicle. Testicle, yeah, yes, because there's the, the, we created the kill. ad for testicle. It's got a super slick ad. It looks like cornhole, but it's it's got a person with their legs yeah. spread at the. You should get the book. I mean, who are we kidding? I, I, that's the only game that I can recall that we, we invented. Well, I, actually, I remember we invented a game on like a, a like a conference room type table with with oh, white with uh, what's that? What do we call dry it? erase markers? And there's a thing you can do with a dry erase marker where it's yes. you can kind of put your fingers on top of if it's laying down, you put your fingers on top of it, and then you press, and it will it'll like. Shoot it out like backspin, like with backspin, like a like a log, like a lumberjack running on a log in a river, and then he like slips off the backside and it plump, it thrusts it forward. This may be a complicated analogy, but um, picture doing that with just your fingers, like just pressing down on a dry erase marker, and it slides out from underneath and goes across the table, and it's whoever can get the closest, the closest without going to off the, the far table. edge without falling off, and then you can knock you the can other knock people's other people's off. Off. What do we call that? Well, it was kind of like we, shuffleboard, but we had a ridiculous name for it that had nothing to do with dry erase markers. I can't remember. That's a great game if you have uh, a boardroom, a boardroom, and you're bored. <laughs> um, but a game that I think the the title is somewhere in that. The game that uh, I played, which I don't know if you ever came over for this, but you remember, uh, again, we, we discussed this in the Book of Mythicality, but my, my next door neighbor was Peter Dinklage growing up, not the Peter Dinklage, but my Peter Dinklage. And he had, when we were in like middle school, or maybe even younger, his cousin came to live with them to go to school at Campbell University. Remember that, Eric? And he was like the coolest guy in the world because he was a college student. Yeah, but he hung out with. But like, Peter yeah, like Dinklage. on Friday night, he would hang with us. Uh, and we invented this mix of tag and hide and seek, where. Well, there is 
There is an element of tag in hide and seek, but go ahead. But does hide and seek involve getting back to a certain home base always, or is it just if you're found, that's it? No, I think you get in its full form, you get okay. back to base. Then we were just playing hide and seek. <laughs> um, you invented, we invented hide, hide and seek. seek. No, but we played it. With there, the was, base. there was a tree base, and it I, was I nighttime, and we all dressed up in black. And like, like Eric, the college student, would come out. And of course, now that I think about it, I'm like, how weird is that? It's like you know, he didn't have much of a college life, but we loved it. And he would he would come out in a full black sweatsuit and like a black. Uh, Beanie. It's one thing for a college Sometimes student to play with middle schoolers participating we, we, in their we game. We were in middle school. It's another thing for a college student to get fully decked out in order to play a game with middle schoolers. But I look forward to it so much. I, I do remember playing this a few times. It got it, so intense. Well, you, you, you ha from a young age, it seems, you had this affinity for the dark. And <laughs> I, from a young age, True. have had what is the opposite of an affinity? A scaredness? <laughs> <laughs> I hated it. I hated the dark. I still hate the dark. You know when I take out the trash, I got them, I, you know, I'll go around the side of my house and I'll take out the trash at night and then I'll run back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and I had lights installed at our freaking trash can. Just so, I was like, I am a man. I'm gonna conquer this by installing lights at my trash can. No, but you know a really good exercise Which for that? Which is not conquering it. Because it isn't that d I'm, it's don't not, turn this into therapy. No, no, it's not that I'm not scared, I'm also scared. Okay, turn it into therapy. Um, when I when I have to take, the first of all, it's Locke's responsibility to take the trash down our long inclined driveway. It's Lincoln's responsibility, but that but, doesn't mean that I don't have to do it every right, week. Right, exactly, they're teenagers. So. What I have done is I is I go down there and I get to the bottom of the street and it's dark and there might be like a cougar or a coyote legitimately, there, right? There could be a legit coyote. Or maybe like, Mountain you, lion. like a floating ghost. Sometimes it depends on what movie you've watched recently. Like a little girl like floating like a foot off the ground and like looking at you with dead black eyes. Cool. Think about that when you're out there next to your trash can. But what I do is I get down there and I just stop and I don't run, you can't run. And I embrace it, I say, I'm going to absorb whatever this is and just stay here and take it until it goes away and then I'm going the to- The demonic power? And then I'm going to yeah, absorb the <laughs> demonic power <laughs> and then I'm going to slowly walk up. I'm gonna resist the the urge to scary. run. Like scary. <laughs> don't run, you can't give it. You walk slowly and confidently. The thing I love about your anecdote is that it admitted that you're just as, Afraid as I am, but I don't show it. You're just more prideful than I am. No, it's part no. of the therapy. Man. Okay, I it's get like it. smiling to induce happiness. Walk confidently to get rid of scaredness. What were we talking about? I don't know. But I'm going to move on to another question. Sherry, things you thought were true for the longest time, and how you found out about it. Oh, I've got one for this. Listen, I think Reddit is, is, is becoming too big a part of my nightlife because. <laughs> Those are your nighttime activities, no, Reddit? No, it's not, well it's part of it. I, I go to sleep looking at Reddit now. Um, well I don't actually fall, I, well I have. I do fall asleep sometimes when like my phone hits my chest now that's and dangerous. I pick, it, I pick because it up and there's Reddit on. You it. can accidentally, if you, especially if you do that on Twitter, you can accidentally end up liking something. Well, I'm just sleepy. Hold on. I mean, I'm just saying you got to be careful. Look I'm not at, on like Ambien or anything. But I, I'm just saying, be, no, no. It's like as it's like falling. Like if you're looking at something, and you're like, oh, that's crazy, and then it like falls on your face, and you end up liking. Oh, it. I, I mean, nose like something. Yeah, you, I mean, it, there's lots of different ways it can happen. You got to be careful. So as soon as I get sleepy, I put my phone down because it's dangerous at that point. Well, I don't think it's good to shove a screen in your face right before you go to sleep every night anyway, circadianly speaking. Circadianly speaking. Um, but this blew my mind. There was a post um, not too long ago and I think it was worded like, I'm 36 or I'm 43 years old and it's taken me this long to figure out that a bird of 
paradise plant is not the head, like the, it's not, the, I saw this it's post. not the head of a kooky bird, it's the entire body of a bird where the, the nose of the bird is, is pointing back towards the stem from which the flower comes. And the wings are out. And the wings are out. I don't think a lot of people, I, I think most people were under the impression that I definitely was under the same impression that you're under. That it was a kooky that it was a, head. That it was a big headed bird. Sticking its head out of like a bush. And like, we, we had these in my old house. Like every day in the driveway, I would get in and out of the car. At least two times a day, I would see these things whenever they were blooming. And I never once saw it the correct way. Or why is that the correct way though? Well, because if you look at a bird of paradise, it it looks like one that right, way. Right, because a bird of paradise isn't some big stork looking thing yeah. like what the, what that interpretation of it would be. And it and it just blew my mind. And I told I showed it to Christy cuz she's super into plants, you know. That's her that's that's how she gets going. Oh, really? Show her some plants. You and she, your, her mind your, was your plant costume. Her, on. her mind. I have a tree man costume. Exploded. I can, can I borrow I that? I could show up and warm things can, up. No, can, <laughs> no, can I borrow that? Oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. I wouldn't come inside. I'd just stay out in the yard. And then the, the, there are other there are other plants. Um, no, not other plants. There are other Reddit posts where people have like literally taken googly eyes and either with Photoshop or in real life have placed eyes on the two different places that could indicate where the head and the face of the. To make the big headed bird. Or the, or the, the small one that kind of just looks like a, a hummingbird in flight. And it's not as impressive as the big headed bird. No. But it made a lot more sense. D but did she, did she know this already? No, she was, she was with us. Yeah, I think most people are. You know what, something that I've also been- Because it looks like a beak. A lot of people have been talking about. But it's the tail. Uh, and I think there was a Twitter moment about this weeks ago. All these people are realizing that Donald Glover and Childish Gambino are the same person. Like that is happening. And that kinda- Yeah. That kinda blew my mind a little bit. Yeah. Because I totally understand how, it depends on how you were introduced to the two different facets of his career but if he, i mean it's i guess it's very easy to listen to and enjoy his music but not watch a music video or see his face attached to it no but i think people because his previous album you know it's not like he, he's on the cover but i think these are people who have well, my guess is they've seen him do his thing as childish gambibo gambibo uh oh. gambino and then still not put it together because the way that people t re reveal that they finally understood this yeah. is like this mind blowing thing that you're like, oh, I thought they, oh, they kind of, oh, it is the same person. Um, But that did not happen to me. I knew. Yeah. I knew. Birds of Paradise, they got me. I'm not gonna shame anyone for thinking Donald that. Donald Glover did not get me. I get it. I'll never look at a bird of paradise the same way again. Matter of fact, I'll never look at one again. Huh, I win. Well, there's two in my front yard. I will avert my eyes. This is from Emily. Emily Sestak, 27. What was your favorite memory from GMM Ear Biscuits and or the tour of mythicality? Mine was meeting you guys. Nice to meet you, Emily. I could see that your profile picture is the meeting that we had. Must have been meaningful, that's cool. I can't tell which stop that was. Well that's it for us, Emily, meeting you. Yep. Seems like that has to be our answer, and it is, you know what? That's our answer. But what's the second highlight besides meeting Emily? Um, I think one of the highlights of the tour mythicality that has come up multiple times is when we went to Washington DC I could easily figure it out, but I can't quite figure it out off the top of my head where we went from DC. But Philadelphia, I think so. Um, we brought Lily with us, and so bringing Lily for that little leg of the tour was was a highlight for me. But then she always talks about, you know, we we did, and if you watched the Retin Link Instagram, we did some stories where we were on the mall, and like we did we did the whole mall thing. Boy, that was a highlight. <laughs> 
But then she always talks about, I don't know, she just brings it up a lot. She's like, remember that time when we were in Washington DC and it was freezing outside and we came out of the museum and we were like really hungry and there were all of those food trucks there and there was that one that had like mm. the lamb and chicken plates and we, we each got one and it was so windy but we sat outside and we ate them and I was like, yeah, I remember that. She was like, that's one of the best meals I've ever had. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you know, it's one of those, you, you know, the the best meal you've ever had in, in quotes. It's so much about the surrounding experience. So it just feels, it always makes me feel great when she brings that up because as good as I know that that food was, and it was good. It was very good. Um, She's basically saying we created a memory and you happen to be there too, right? <laughs> I was there. Um, it was a good meal. So that not that, the best of my that life. was that was that was certainly a highlight. And then her kind of assisting us. I, I could you know I could tell that like she was glad to be there and she felt like she's part of the team. And she's the only she's the only child between the two of us who would be capable <laughs> of offering any sort of help. Yeah. In in the, in that capacity, she got some tea. She got some throat coat before we went yeah. on stage. Um, it reminds me of the time. Well, the whole, the whole chicken and rice thing then is is unrelated. Uh, but so the halal guys in uh, in Manhattan who had a uh, a food truck, a food cart that we actually featured in our very 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 old food cart song, which was in two thousand eight, so ten years ago, as part of the Alka Seltzer Great American Road Trip, we did this song about food cart people, and. Uh, <clears throat> Has a good message. Doing that song, we were introduced to this, what was at the time, probably the most famous food cart in the nation. Uh, yeah. Since then they've expanded from, so it's basically chicken and rice, uh, and they've got like a white sauce and a hot sauce, and it's, uh, you, can get, you can get lamb or chicken or both. Oh, and you should get both. Um, it's funny how. And it's, and, it's, and it's, I mean, a lot of food trucks and food carts serve this particular dish. But they but, did it in a but special way. But so much better. Here's the funny thing. And it's still there, you can go there. 10 years later, my perspective has changed significantly on this, right? Because in 2008, I never really had uh, chicken, lamb, and rice in that fashion. Mm -hmm. Now living in Los Angeles, I mean, I literally cannot walk seven feet without ha having chicken or rice hit my face. You know what I'm saying? Right, it's it, just, it, it, it rains it. Right. And um, that that style of kind of uh, like a Middle Eastern style of chicken and rice is everywhere. And so I, we don't really go back and, and go to that cart anymore. We did one time when we went with Stevie and we were all out there at like 2 a.m. eating this chicken and rice and I was like, I don't know if this was worth it. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I've had a lot of chicken and rice since then. Uh, but we would go there. And I, I would, that was not a good experience for me. I, Cause I got you sick. You got sick. Yeah. I was really sick. Yeah, you you got sick. We haven't been back to the cart since then. And now they I remember we were sitting, like we had gotten this. We were like building it up to Stevie. We're like, we got to take you to this to get these this halal guys. We got to get a tray. And then there's not, you know. And then we're going and we're sitting against a building, like, and I didn't feel good. So I was like sitting down, and you guys were standing up. And there were some businessmen there. You remember that? Yeah, and they started. And we were, they started talking. To they us. started talking to us, and they didn't realize that I was sick. We didn't want to talk, and I really didn't want to talk. And so, in the middle of the conversation, because I started standing, I remember I just kind of slid down the the side of the building and sat and put my head between my knees. And it was kind of I created kind of an awkward moment with these businessmen. They slowly walked away at that point. I do yeah. remember that. Oh, I think they made fun of me a little bit. That guy's having a problem. Um, Food poisoning perhaps, I don't know. Now those guys have. Uh, Not they, from the halal guys, but from whatever was before. Before that, they, they've got a, uh, they've got uh, like an actual restaurant in, in Glendale? Yeah, I haven't been to that. But people don't, people don't review it well, and I think it's because there's so much good food in that style out here that mm -hmm. you know it didn't necessarily stand as much of a chance. Uh, well, I don't mean to, there's your highlight. So the, the one thing I will say about favorite memory from GMM makes me think is uh, uh, the, I don't remember much from GMM until somebody asks a specific question about something. 
or Shepard, which Shepard binge watches GMM and he'll go deep. Uh huh. Because he doesn't watch it on a regular basis, but sometimes he'll you just you'll find him at the downstairs computer and he's going through, he's just laughing. So it does make me feel good that he he thinks that we're funny. Um, yeah, that's good. He's got good taste. But sometimes I'll I'll, I'll find him watching something. And I'm like, oh yeah. That, as long as he finds us funny, he that, has good taste. That happened. So I, that's how I find out my memories is by seeing them again on my own home computer. Link another question for you from Brittany Renier. Link, do you ever wish you had siblings? Do you mm. think your lack of siblings influenced your relationship or your friendship with Rhett? I'm Rhett, that's me. I am an only child, but I do have siblings. Um, I have a, let's see, my dad, my dad and my mom had me, my dad got remarried and had um, two more kids who are my half siblings. Right. So I got a half sister and a half brother. Um, Together they make one A whole person. sibling. Yeah. Um, and that whole sibling spread across two distinct and wonderful individuals are people that I never lived with. Um, and you know, I actually don't see them that often now, so it's not, you know, we don't, we don't have that strong of a relationship, but um, my, but Christy is Facebook friends with Lauren, who is my half sister. Uh, yeah. And, um, there were over the years. There was like uh, lots of variables which kept us from being uh, actually having a, like a vibrant relationship. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but it's not that we're on bad terms, and so n nothing about my opinion has to do with uh, my relationship or interactions with them. My, but I I am strongly of the opinion when I talk to someone who. Is ha has a kid? I'm like, hey, do you have have any kids? They're like, yeah, we got one. I'm like, okay, well, you need to have another one. Don't do that to the. I kind of I kind of make light of it. I, I've 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 seen this in action. Do I make it awkward when I do that? Because it's like people usually this conversation is one you're having with someone you're just meeting. I do believe you talk about how many kids, and for someone just to come out and say, yeah, yeah. have another one. I will say it's it's safe to say that unsolicited family planning advice to people you just met risky is not necessarily the best course of action. But the way that I say it, I say, well, have another one because you don't want to do it. You don't want to do that to 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 your first child. I'm an only child, and you don't want them to turn out like me. Ha 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 So that's kind of a self-deprecating joke. Comes, comes back to you. Hmm. But in just a self-deprecating. Like, just like an only child. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I, you know, I, I do feel like I missed out on a lot. I, I think that I'm soft hmm. because I don't have any siblings. The thing that I've observed about my kids is that they give each other such a hard time they get on each other's nerves so much that it's ultimately a healthy thing. It builds a thick skin. And it also, I really think it helps them understand that like there's plenty of times and at this age, I think they would say the majority of the time they don't like each other. But they know that they love each other. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's not, you, know, you don't difference. have to say, well you gotta love each other. It's like, and they're too smart to, tell each other they love each other usually. And special, special occasions. It's a question it, of intelligence. It'll huh? eke out. But they're. Yeah, my kids. But you, that's. that's we, have, a, we have to tell them. We yeah, have to tell them to do that. To, to say they love each other. But I think they know deep down that they are experiencing true familial love. And they're, but they annoy the, the crap out of each other. And I just think that's a really healthy thing to be exposed to and not think that, you know, it's you're the what you're the center of the world. Well, I, I and I, and I I think I, I was definitely spoiled, and I was not I was not punished for things. You know this. I mean, you got you would always get frustrated when we would get in trouble for something, and then you'd get punished and go home and get punished for it. Come to school the next day, and and you'd be like, "What about you?" I'd be like, "Nothing. I'm cool, man. I I got no punishment." Yeah. Well. I, and I, well, and I think that was just your mom's style of discipline, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 
I, I, I mean, theoretically, it does make sense that, and so, so by that rationale, you definitely are very special when the, you're the only child. The more kids, it's not healthy to be. The more brothers, too and, the, the more brothers and sisters you have, the more deference there is to other people's needs, and I think that that probably makes you more likely to, um, like, because because again, when there's a the parent and the child, very different roles, of course, it kind of goes without saying, but it's just like when a parent does something for a child, whether they get you a dessert or they get you they get you a present or whatever. Mm -hmm. When it's just a parent giving that to one child, then they're on the receiving end of that, but like, you know, almost as a point of an opportunity for teaching. Like, we get our kids a dessert that they have to split and it's they it's horrible. It actually makes it sometimes you want to get them each their own thing because you don't want to deal with them fighting over getting exactly it exactly split in the right proportions. Oh yeah. But I, I have to believe that that practice over time does make people more 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 willing to defer in certain situations. I mean, don't you feel like, I mean, Cole's what, th three years, four years older than you? Three, yeah. You feel like you, I mean, what, what, what do you think is the chief benefit of him being there? He, he helped you with your interest in music, helped you get onto the right Hip hop threads. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm not, yeah, all that. This, this, especially as a younger brother, like there's all all the things that you get. I wouldn't know who Cool Mo D was, <laughs> 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 you know. And that's a and that's a big thing for me now. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> Queen well, Latifah. Well, I, I, well, I think it's what I just said. I think it's, and again. This is also, I don't know, we're not child psychologists. <laughs> Do we have to remind you? <laughs> but uh, were you jealous of him? I'll uh, ask it that way. Well, yeah, I, you know, I don't think there was as much, I don't, I, I see this between my kids, lots of things of like Locke saying, I would never have gotten away with that. I think my parents were actually much more conscious about being um, consistent, consistent in their discipline and their standards from, older to younger kids in a way that we relaxed ourselves. I know you have as well with each one that's gone down. It's just like Lando can do whatever he wants to <laughs> and so can Shepard pretty much. Yeah. Who knows what's gonna happen with those kids. Um, but I, to me, I think it's, and I do think that it, you can make this adjustment later on in life, especially like, you know, then you, you we shared a room in college. You lived with other people, now you live with Christy. So I think that, but you may have had more challenges to overcome with kind of giving somebody else their space and, and accommodating someone else's preferences. But I think you you have, you have being like particular about things, mm -hmm. I don't think that's a result of being a, a, a only child. I think that's just your personality makeup. But like caring about certain but things. But I might, I might have gotten better at stepping outside of it earlier because I, I most certainly would have had to do that if I had another sibling. Now I will point out that I lived with a stepsister from grade kindergarten to third grade. So I did have, I did have a, I guess I did live with a sibling. But it's weird because, um, let's see, Emmy was like, I think it was five years older than me. So and I do think it starts to make a difference because I didn't see her as my bona fide sister. I was I was very annoyed by her, but we didn't. I don't recall us doing that much together. We each there was a pretty big age difference out. in the girl and guy. I don't know. I mean, one of the things that I'm kind of exploring in my life journey at this point is trying to deconstruct my personality. Um, and understand <clears throat> why I am the way that I am, and one of, and so I've always thought of myself as very independent, right? You know, so you know when I went off to college, even I was, you know, I was only an hour away from home, but in my mind, I didn't talk to my mom or dad again until Thanksgiving. Now I know I probably ended up calling them, but I did not, I did not call my parents a lot. I still don't, mm -hmm. and. I'm I'm pretty independent. Like I I don't like to receive help 
for things, you know, I'm uncomfortable with getting help and I like, if I face with a problem, the first thing I do is just try to figure it out on my own. And I always just thought that like, that was a super positive thing and that I'm just an independent person. I'm not a needy person. I don't like to be needy. I don't, in a group of people, I don't want to be the person who complains about something. I don't wanna be the person that everyone's having to adjust their course of action because of me and my needs. And I always thought that this was a positive thing. In some senses, it is a positive thing. But one of the, something I'm around learning, me it is. Go it, ahead. Something though. that I'm learning is that there's probably a time in my life, uh, probably between the time I was like three, four, and five, when there was just circumstances in my life, whether that was uh, something with my parents or something with my my you know my brother, uh, where we were at the time, something I was going through where I began to kind of put up a little bit of kind of thing, like I'm going to take care of things on my own. And I, and I had an incredible childhood. I, you know, intact home, very stable, very loving parents. And so there's not like some, uh, you know, initial event that I can point to or anything like that. But I'm kind of discovering that some of the, you basically put on the shell of a personality that helps you, um, cope with whatever you're, you're dealing with and then you kind of carry that well into adulthood and then if you begin to kind of do some work on yourself and deal with yourself, you begin to realize that, oh, part of that shell that I put on myself to kind of make it into adulthood is unnecessary now. In fact, it is, is a hindrance for me understanding who I am and dealing properly with my own emotions. Because um, that's what, cause another thing, I've always thought, I'm just not an emotional guy. You know, I, it's like, and in, in, in Jesse and I talk about this in our relationship. You know, she's like, I, you know, sometimes I just feel like you're not as present as you should be, or you're, you just don't seem to be as passionate about this at times as I would like you to be. And I'm like, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just not a needy guy. I'm not, I don't wear my emotions on my sleeve. And I'm, not, but it turns out that there's a portion of that that I'm figuring out that is ultimately unhealthy. And so what ends up happening is I actually am experiencing emotions because everybody is experiencing emotions, but then it'll come out sideways and like snapping at the kids or snapping at Jesse or potentially in some sort of physical manifestation of not properly channeling my emotions. Just beginning to kind of get into this and deal with this. You talking about like a vestigial arm? Uh, yeah, I have an arm that I have not told anybody about. It An is, emotional arm. It's on my lower back and I will reveal it in season 14 of Good Mythical Morning. Uh, but it's made up of pure pent up emotion. I don't know exactly where I'm going with that but I, ultimately I guess the question that got us into this is the whole sibling thing. Um, so you're saying your brother screwed my you My brother up. caused this. <laughs> no, but I, but I think that what, I, well I, I know where I, where I was going with this. I would think that while there are certain ways that kids who are in families of like, you know, six, seven, eight kids would be super self-sufficient, they may have some emotional work to do later in life because they had to defer their own needs so much to kind of be a part of a family that was that big, which again, makes you a person that's easy to get along with. That's another thing I've always, I'm easy to get along with. I don't, I don't complain about a lot of things. I don't cause trouble in a group. Uh, but it also, there's a negative side to that with I'm holding, I end up holding things in and I don't even experience in them, I don't experience them personally uh, in a way that maybe you are better at because you didn't have to hold any of that in because you were, most of the time, it was just you and your mom. And my G.I. Joes. So, you, so in other words, you may have some different challenges but you also may have some things, some benefits from that. So. All that to say, you probably shouldn't be giving unsolicited family planning advice to people with one kid. They should just do whatever they feel's best in their family and see how it turns out. Yeah, they're gonna be, kids are gonna be screwed up no matter what. And they're gonna have to work through the crap Bingo. because they're human. <sighs> Journey. Yes. Journey Rain. That's a name. Journey Rain. Yep, she does. That almost sounds made up. Should be a weather person. I don't know what you do, but if you ever choose to be a weather person, we will support you. What is something super nostalgic for you guys? Weather. Weather. She used the term weather in this. 
But not spelled that way. Yeah, but it's whether it's a smell or a taste or something you see that will remind you of something from your past. A weird. And I think this will be our last question. What? So Unless I make it like precisely quick. Because I want, no, because I want to be able to have the conversation that you oh. teased. Oh, that's right. Because I got to get to the, the eye doctor. Maybe I'm remembering this because we were talking about the tour of mythicality, but this is what popped into my head. Uh, I experienced like a high, a spike of nostalgia when we went to that one, there was this one venue that we went to. I'll describe it to you, maybe you can help me remember which city it's in, because they all started to run together for us, but don't you don't you remember we were, we were the first time we saw the venue, lots of times we would be coming from backstage and then going out on the stage to do a sound check. And I remember looking out at the seats and I'm like, oh crap, it's the Bowie's Creek auditorium seats. Mm, yeah, I don't remember where it was, but I do remember you pointing it out and I definitely agree. And, they, and it was a specific model of like wooden seat that was like a, a curved back seat with like the and it had a, li a lighter stained wood that had been worked into a pattern mm -hmm. amongst the seats. And then the seat bottom would, you know, like a theater seat, it would go up and then when you sat on it, it would go down. I think it was Philadelphia, I don't know though. It was an, yeah, it was an old venue and it was the exact same model of seats that I have not seen anywhere else since Bowie's Creek Elementary School. And I remember sitting in those seats as a, as a fidgety little kid you know, for all the school assemblies from like kindergarten all the way through eighth grade, and you'd sit, you'd sit down, and I remember the feeling of that seat just going down. And then there were a few seats that were broken, and you knew not to sit in those. Right. But then some people wouldn't know, and they would sit in it, and it would like, burp, it would go sideways, and you'd fall. And then there, some of the wood on some of them, on the backs of some of them, would be stripped off because these kids would be real fidgety and they would start to grab it and strip away the oh yeah the wood and it's it's crazy how something can trigger memories to that level and i could smell Bowie's Creek auditorium you know auditorium I, smell wood and lacquer now it didn't smell like the room we were in but i but my memory made me access that smell and usually it works in the opposite way where you like smell something that'll trigger a memory that happens well, all the time I have it's a, like a a and new, even stronger, a new, a new way to get to a memory. I have a, a stronger Bowie's Creek smell that recently hit me. Yeah, and maybe this has happened to you because this has happened a few times. So, um, Locke was doing some basketball event at a um, at this old gym at an old school somewhere in town. I don't remember exactly where, but uh, had to take a whiz as you do. A whiz. A, a whiz, <laughs> not talking about the movie, which I highly recommend. <laughs> That's the whiz. I had to just take a whiz. And uh, I went into the boy's bathroom and it smelled exactly like the Bowie's Creek Elementary boy's bathroom. Now, and like, I, a, like a mixture of like stale urinal water. But the, so I'm, the thing I wanna understand is because it's just, it's, it's tile, it's like that green, that light green tile in those old style urinals. Mm -hmm. And built like a tank. Yeah, all the way to the ground. The ones at Bowie's Creek didn't go all the way to the ground, these did. And I was trying to figure out, what is it I'm smelling? Cause it's not well, like. I, I think it's the pipes and a certain water type and then urine, like, like just baked in urine. But like elementary urine? Yeah, like. It's different, uh, it's young, like juice boxes. And youngster like urine. Sweet acidophilus milk carton. Remember, <laughs> that? remember that? I didn't know what that milk was. <laughs> I never got that milk. I would always get the chocolate milk. I was so picky, I didn't even like their chocolate milk. It wasn't, it wasn't the exact right type of chocolate. Maybe there's something about a, like a public school diet and the way that it interacts with you, you know, like a six to 12 year old's body. <laughs> yeah. And then the pipes. Anyway, it's not a pleasant smell. I wouldn't like turn it into a fragrance. Did you know, it, I wouldn't recommend no. that. No, did, did a specific memory flash into your mind as a result of that? Yeah, I was peeing, I was whizzing. 
And uh, <laughs> the memory of Maurice Cameron coming up behind me while I was whizzing. Yeah. And tapping me on the butt while I was whizzing. You tapping know, you on the butt. You, you know, like you, 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 somebody's in the middle of peeing and you come up and you like kick them with your foot. So like you just go, a little bit. So you, so you make. So it wasn't a tap as much as a light push, right? It was to get you to st- 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 squeeze and stop. Yeah. Stop the stream. Yeah. And then, and actually I've been, I, I, I've been. Uh, Trying to recover for that? Oh yeah. 38 uh, years? It's very difficult for me to pee in front of another individual. I get what do you call? It? I want to say camera shy. What do you what, trigger happy? What do you what do you call it when you can't pee in front of somebody? Uh, Something shy, whiz shy. Performance. It's like performance, performance anxiety. anxiety. It's not that. It's something else. But I'll remember it later when it's unimportant. But I feel like I I, I link that back to being and he because he he, he kind of had that was his thing. He would Maurice do. messed you up, and uh, and so I'm always thinking, is Maurice going to come up behind me? While I'm standing at the airport next to this guy, wondering whose whose pee is going to hit the water first, you know, he's like this ghost of Maurice. I should write a short story called "The Ghost of Maurice." He's not dead. I don't know if he is or not. I hope he's not. He shouldn't be. No, I, he should I be also, out there just lightly tapping people as I they whiz. Don't. I don't think he ever did that to me because I don't have any problems just letting it whiz. But what about yesterday, dude? When we whizzed, what are you talking about? When we, you and I whizzed in that in that bathroom, like we went to a meeting, and then after the meeting, oh yeah, we we had to whiz, <laughs> and uh, we had to get the key from the from the uh, receptionist receptionist, and then go unlock the door, and we unlock the door, and there there's a three sinks and a urinal, and then two stalls. And we had to go to the stalls because there was, there was an a older guy man. at the urinal. He was a security guard. Yeah, and I, th- I thought he greeted us when we walked in, but then I realized he wasn't talking to us. He was talking to himself. But then I started to think, oh no, he's not talking to himself. I think he's talking to God because I'll, he looks yeah. like it sounded like he was praying. I heard the words. He said "delicioso," which I thought was Italian, "delicioso." And he also said Jesus, so he said delicious Jesus, as far oh, as gosh. I can, as far as I can tell. And you know what? I heard Jesus while peeing, and I. And, but he was also. I it, thought he might be on the phone. A but lot of there times, was no phone. Now, ladies, I'll just let you know. A lot of times when you when you go into a men's restroom and there's older men in there and they're whizzing, there's a <laughs> lot of like, <sighs> like, like sighing, like the even like the, grunting the deepest relief you can imagine. And all of us are making that sound in our minds and then some of us as we break a thir- certain threshold of age, just let it happen audibly. Yeah, cause, cause, cause but he it, was also thanking Jesus for the delicious moment. Jesus, uh, and it was it sounded just like this. <laughs> Jesus, delicious. <laughs> and it, it sounded like a chant because it repeated. I heard Jesus more than once. But he said Jesus, which well, it's Spanish, but then that's true. He but said, then hey, he said "delicioso," which hey, is that so sp- is that Spanish? Delicioso. I thought that was Italian. Hey, so I don't know. And then, so we each go into a a stall next to each other, and y- you were talking to me a little bit about something, but then it got quiet, and I was like, I was just about to start busting out laughing. Yeah, because this guy the whole time he was chanting. It's like he didn't know we were there, or but something. He, he did know because we. Made our entrance. I mean, it was obvious there were other people in there. It's a small bathroom. And then I thought maybe Jesus responded because it got quiet for a second, and all of a sudden I heard, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Nope, that's not a that's no, not a, no, that's not an act of God." No, it wasn't. That is just a fart. And then it, it's like it released another valve that then he was able to pee some more. <laughs> Well, you never know, man. Hey, we're heading that way real fast. What, yeah, whatever it takes. I don't we'll know let how you. It works. I'm sure we'll speak about it in depth when we discover the advantages of how how the way to open the the door, the kidney door yep. to like another valve. Okay, is just by farting. You got six minutes to make your uh, make your speech. You don't have eight. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I, I got. I thought on the you road. had to leave it at twenty after. No, that's when the appointment is. Oh. There's nothing wrong with your eyes, man. Don't worry about it. I have to go back. I've already postponed this appointment one time and they charged me for it. Well, those are all the questions we're gonna take today and we wanna thank you for submitting those. Again, on the social medias is how you communicate with us. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. But the thing I wanna get to is 
First of all, I wanna invite you to think of, consider sharing this podcast with somebody who is not a fan of Good Mythical Morning or has never listened to Ear Biscuits. I, the thing that I'm realizing is I think that this show is evolving and um, definitely over this past year, we've, we, we made a decision to not have guests and to settle in to just us having conversations. And even though we made that decision, we're still trying to figure out exactly what Ear Biscuits is. But I think it's really taking shape and I think we're beginning to understand, but it's I, well, honestly, I, would say, I think we're in a difficult position because we're the ones talking and doing this and kind of going on instinct to characterize what but, the show well, is. But just as a thought starter, mm -hmm. again, it's open to further definition, but I would say at this point, it is a open and honest conversation between two lifelong friends who may or may not be funny to you uh, that is often driven by questions that are submitted and sometimes just driven by experiences that these two guys have. There's probably a more catchy like bumper sticker way to describe that, but it's not subject based. It's not about any particular thing. Um, but if you think that there's somebody out there, and I'm glad you mentioned like somebody who's not a fan of GMM, because I think that because GMM has gotten so popular and it is the thing that 90% of people who know who we are know us through, and you either like it or you don't, and I think you have a, a certain conception of what GMM is, and usually it's those guys who eat testicles on the internet, and if you're not into that, then you, I think you just sort of say, okay, I'm gonna kind of write these guys off, but there's, I think there's a lot of people out there who would enjoy the conversations that we have, who may not enjoy the things that we do that are a little lower brow on GMM. Now we enjoy both, and we're glad to have you if you enjoy both and listen to both. So we're not, you know, we're not saying anything negative about your taste because I mean, uh, that makes us feel good that you like both aspects of what we're doing. But we do want to acknowledge that the people who are who are telling us that we we're, we're meeting fans in person, we're seeing tweets. It's like ear biscuits. Uh, I really got into this. Like I'm a huge fan, and this is what. I, I just love it. And you can tell that they may not even know about Good Mythical Morning. And I think we're encouraged by that. And I think it's um, it opens up the possibility for you to maybe share this podcast for some, with someone who has a similar sensibility to these type of conversations, maybe um, is, is endeavoring creatively like we are, or as a husband, a wife, or a, a parent, um, or is just someone who's uh, finding themselves getting older, or all the things we talk about? Like it's it's weird for us to like overanalyze what 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 we bring to this. So what I think ultimately we kind of leave it to you, but um, we want to invite you to think about sharing this podcast with someone who uh, either has a reference for GMM or doesn't have a point of reference at all for what we're doing. And I would say that. You may know somebody who listens to podcasts because it, it, it typically goes that if you listen to podcasts, you listen to podcasts and you don't just listen to one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, maybe some of you, this is the only podcast you listen to and you haven't moved on to, to anything else, but and that's fine. But So maybe you know somebody who's looking for, there are certain people, a certain kind of lifestyle where they want to have something in their ear while they're doing something else. And that's really what a podcast is great for. I love it while I'm working out. I love listening to stuff while I'm while I'm working out or while I'm driving. So if you know people who are into that kind of thing, recommend your biscuits to them. But then maybe you're the kind of person who this was the first podcast that you listened to and this was uh, an introduction to the world of podcasting and you're like, oh, I never thought that I had an appetite for this kind of content, now I do. Uh, that may be a way to talk about it. Again. It, the whole point here is that we wanna keep doing this. Um, the more people that listen to this, uh, the more sense it makes for us to continue doing it. That's just kinda how this this thing works because it is. It, it, while it's a passion and it's also a, a release for us and I think part of our friendship is, our, is, is based on these conversations that we have now a lot of times that we save to have in front of you guys. 
Uh, but this is also a business. That's why we have sponsors. Uh, that's why we say the podcast is supported by fill in the blank. It's because uh, this is a this is a part of the greater business of mythical, mythical entertainment. Uh, so the more people that are listening, the better it is for the entertainment that we're creating. And ultimately, this whole show is supported by you. So we want to thank you for listening and telling us what you think specifically about this. Use hashtag Ear Biscuits. Yeah. And you becomes before the eye. We will talk to you next week.